Okay, so it's been a couple months for sure. Unfortunately, what happened previously is, what was I doing last? Uh, I was doing binary conversion stuff to writing, re encoding, decoding, data, content, create info, component data, whatever, to and from binary. And during part of that, I was just, I just kind of slowed down and stopped because I was just doing some very basic, um, important, but you know, very basic boilerplate code, basically all over the place. You know, the kind of stuff that you would, uh, do that, you know, like C++ would automatically do when it generates, let's say, you know, default constructors, default copy, operator equals, uh, mo copy move operators, you know, that kind of stuff. Boilerplate stuff, which is incredibly error prone and, well, boring because you keep having to do it over and over and over for more and more content. And I just kind of realized, you know, this, this can't, this, this is not a great way to go about things. This is very slow, boring, and, you know, worst of all, very error prone. And, un and unless I was going to go around writing test cases for like, God knows how many different types of objects, it, like, it, it was not sustainable. So I just kind of stopped and kind of got a bit of a mental block from that because like I, I you know it's not just the bi to and from binary it's like previous things like the the this, the same thing for to and from yaml uh things for like the cleanup functions things for comparison functions if i want to be like you know uh, free function free floating interface compatible like i can't necessarily i cannot necessarily rely on C++'s auto-generate for structure types and what have you, especially if I want to do deep comparisons, you know, through into pointers, which I would then have to uh, uh, specify myself anyways. So, I, you know, I just kind of came up with all, on that realization and just kind of stopped. So the past two months, I've been kind of like slowly thinking about things and not really having a great answer for how to do things. And then, you know, a couple of days ago, I was like, you know, it's been a couple of months. I really should do something. You know, I was stuck in a rut or something like that. I need to do something. So I decided, well, what I'm going to do is do something on the documentation side where I would like slowly transcode like all the different members because, okay, maybe a bit more preface to this. Previously doing things like I've, I've previously I've created uh, auto generated content from an XML file for Vulkan where I would automatically for this project specifically, I would do it for YAML to and from YAML. I'm going to go down here to tools, same thing for the corpus stuff. I would read an, uh, the Vulkan XML, which looks like this from the Kronos group where it have like structure types and whatever, the each member, some values, like the type, the name, the size, some comments, blah, 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 blah. And it'd be not just for structs, it'd be for like everything. It'd be for, you know, enum values, functions, um, enums, bit masks, types, macros, what have you. And yeah, as well as importantly, commands or function prototypes. So, you know, for uh, this, this is some other stuff for the, can I read it? The VK command set sample locations ext. You know, then that named function returns that type and has these parameters. Great. And some other stuff. And then I was doing this. <clears throat> I looked at this and realized this is the source of truth for, in this specific case, the Vulkan API, the spec. They use this document, this XML document, to generate little code snippets, like uh, in the case of this type, <clears throat> like they generate snippets like this, where they have, you know, the structure, they'd have uh, commands, and find the right one. 
they generate these things. These things would automatically, <clears throat> like if you're if you're to add or remove parameters or structure members or anything like that, these would automatically change in the documentation. And not only that, but if I go back, this document is also entirely how they generate their headers that they then you know put that downstream and release. Like th th their headers are generated from this specific document. So this is like the source of truth for everything in the Vulkan ecosystem. And similarly for OpenXR and other Kronos projects, so on and so forth. And then I realized like, I already do this. I already use this. I mean, I do some like pre, I actually gen, I use this XML. I generate my own XML. And then I generate in the Vulkan mini libs. If I just close this up. External Vulcan Minilibs. I do, I already do this, where I take this gener I you know pre-process it myself. I process this XML to another version of XML, and then I generate automatically generate several things. Error codes. I automatically generate cleanup functions that you know based on whatever. You know, if you want to clean up this, you want to clean up externally held random data. Let's say the p application name, which is a null terminated character string. You know, this function, you just call this function on that, and it'll automatically clean up all the stuff associated with it. And it'll follow down through pointers and anything like that, or any other types that have <clears throat> stuff that needs to be cleaned up, and it'll do it for you. And then I do the same thing for comparison, fun uh, comparison functions. I automatically generate these using... What? I don't know why I have that random false there, but it must be there for a reason. Um, <clears throat> this pro probably goes back a while. I, automa I automatically generate this comparison function and I do a deep comparison through this. Like I probably follow somewhere, I check flag local flags and types and then I'd go deeper into the type if it has like a sub <clears throat> pointer to something else, if it exists. Or maybe not, I don't know. Whatever. I. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, like, I go into deeper types and check those and so on and so forth. <clears throat> the point is, this is automatically generated from that Vulcan XML. So, why don't I do the same thing for my thing? Why not take this that I've already been working on and use this as the new source of truth for all those other things, all those derived uh, functionality? A. The documentation. If I change the, if I change these, the documentation gets automatically updated. Same thing for other things. I can change over to slowly. I can slowly change over to change um, generate the headers from these documents, and then not only that, I can actually start changing everything else. Can also start changing as long as uh, uh, the headers. Uh, not, sorry, not the headers. The, of course, yes, the headers will change, but. Comparison functions, the cleanup functions, the to and from YAML functions, and the to and from binary functions, and anything else that's very boilerplate -y. I can derive all of that from this. And when I change this, rather than having like, oh, some files changed, some files not, especially for like downstream things, which I may not even be aware of, like having everything derived from this means I don't really have to worry about changing things down there. I just have to like, Change it here, run a script that like automatically regenerates all derived files, and I am done. Simple, or I would presume, I hope that would be simple. So that's basically how I'm going to move forward from here. Uh, and that's what's going to be the basis of probably the next couple of little things is going to be me changing things around so I can automatically generate a bunch of files from these. XML things. Again, the different types of functions and stuff. And that should help prevent, you know, basically getting bored by doing boilerplate stuff. Yes, it's a bit more complex to do generate, to work on the generators that generate things based on the types that are given. But also like, you know, if things go wrong, if there's like a, if there's an incorrect um, parsing to and from a, for a particular type, it's very easy to fix it across the entirety of everything, of all 
required associated files that needed to be done if it's done here instead of like piecemeal throughout the, the what could possibly be an overly large code base. And of course, this is a very this is actually a pretty extensible thing to do for sub projects down the line. Like if you want to make a plugin, you know, if someone else okay, getting into the realm of fantasy, if someone else wants to make a plugin. And they don't, and they want to basically have a lot of the, the same um, advantages. You know, to easily to easily like define a couple of trade info types or component types that you know have a to and from YAML, to and from binary kind of functions, just quickly generated. That can be done very easily by just generating an XML like this and running the font, running the the simple set of scripts or whatever that I, I'm going to have. And you know, just having those in, and then all you really have to worry about is the logic, the you know, the interesting logic, rather than the boilerplate stuff. So, with all with that eleven minute spiel out of the way, where to begin? Um, yeah. <clears throat> Quite simply, the first place to begin would have to be either the cleanup or the comparison functions. Probably the cleanup functions, I think. Because, okay, the point of the cleanup functions, much like in the Vulcan ones, is to be able to find search types and find externally held data, such as in the case of the material grid info here. This has a type, a, a structure type, which had which is ex held externally from from this right it's a pointer to something held elsewhere so what i want to do the cleanup function goes through and sees like if there's externally held data clean that up and then you'll free the memory from this guy right don't don't free this but free the what you know whatever's held externally through these and then return and then, of course it'll have to go like recursively so like if this was not a pointer to a uh, blend state create info, but this blend state create info was inlined, but it itself holds external data through a pointer or something like that. Then it needs to go into there, clean that up properly, and then come back out properly. And of course, like this could be a chain of things that goes deeper and deeper and deeper. Whatever. The point is, cleanup functions basically you call it on this as long as you're like uh, you're aware that you know this type has externally held like the, the, it was allocated. Uh, through like some very basic means, like it wasn't like a single allocation. It's like you know these are our individually allocated sub items or whatever. As long as it's following that pattern, yeah, just you know have a function that can easily clean this stuff up. Uh, right. <clears throat> so I all I have here is a generate a doc API. I was just generating all these wonderful little things. These things which go right into the documentation. Pretty sure they do. Sure they do. Uh, if I go into delimited string, I have all these things, which then are pulled in through like that. Yeah. Well, not quite correctly, but close. I mean, this you know this is basically as far as I got before I came to the realization for this. You know, I got these and then realized hmm, I can probably expand this to everything. Why not? It's probably a good idea to. <clears throat> Make sure I don't have to worry so much about boilerplate stuff or downstream projects. Plugins. So, first things first is we need to generate cleanup. Generate cleanup. Uh, CD tools, chmod plus x, generate cleanup functions. Okay. So, Let's close that up. Let's bring this up. Let's grab these. Grab that. Error print. A bunch of stuff. Don't care about yet. We get down here. We're going to have set up basically. So I want to also make changes like to this, I think. 
XMLDER. I want to be able to go through because part of the cleanup is to find out if the structure, like an inlined type in the structure also requires it. And I, if, I, if, if that's the case, then I need to be able to go through all of the XMLs that are available. I can't just rely on the current XML. Like in the case of graphics VK, it probably goes to, it doesn't. <clears throat> oh, well, oh, graphics resource. For v faux shader or creative film goes into this type, which is found in faux graphics VK right now. So normally, like if I'm just going through the XML file individually, I have no idea about this type. I need to be able to pull that type, go into this, and find out about this type to determine whether it needs a cleanup. Which means, like, rather than specifying every XML file all the time, I want to just grab a whole or the whole directory's worth of XMLs. And I just want to go through them. And instead, what's going to happen is instead of working on the entire file at once, I'm just going to go on a per type basis. Like I'm going to request the header. I'm going to request the source on of a single type at once over and over and over and over again. Um, so I got XML uh, directory. I need to, this could be multiple. So I need, what was it? And Plus, because I want to be able to grab more than one XML directory, a directory of XML, uh, directory of XML, directories of, with XML files. If you have like, you have this directory plus whatever the plugin directory of yours down the line or something like that, which defaults to an empty array, great. Uh, we're not going to, we're going to print to standard out rather than put into a direct file, just in case like you want to like inline or put like only put clean up individual functions or header declarations or uh, in certain specific spots rather than like a overly broad file. I'm just adding flexibility. That's all I'm doing. Got add argument. And we, so uh, going back, we have the type. Okay. Uh, then we got args equals parser, parser args, so great. Okay, now we need to, first of all, if not args.xml dir. Can I just make this like a requirement? Maybe, hold on a second. Yeah, I can make it required. So required equals true. Required. Look at that. I just don't have to do that anymore. That's great. Um, Grab all the XML, so XML spec roots is empty to start with. We're going to go through uh, false. XML dir. XML dir. Going through each XML directory. If not, ls dot path dot is dir. Our directory just continue. We'll be very lenient on this for file name in. We're going to go through, we're going to list everything that's in the directory. Dot ends with, if it ends with dot XML. This slash file this if 
directory and the file name. We won't try. Parsing file. And then the XML. We're going to extract the XML root equals root. And then we're going to add it. So XML spec roots dot append. So we just have, have a little bit of an accept. Error cannot open or parse XML file, which is file path. Hmm. Now we're going to go through all of them. And then if error, then we return. So I can like go through and find all the XML files that I cannot parse all at once, make things a bit um, speedier, speedier for debugging or whatever, fixing problems. Make sure we actually read something. Actually, so <laughs> do that. Check if, if not anything like that, then we're going to do error print. there if error we could add that um, <clears throat> okay and then at this point we'll actually do the real processing just main we'll call it so that was the this is the setup and then this is the main Type equals false. And what we're going to do, we're going to do XML uh, root and XML spec roots. We're going to find the type that we're interested in. So we do this type equals. We're going to find any types, which is a type where the attribute name equals what we're providing. So that, do, do, do that. Close that up, dot format, and set type. Uh, if type, break. Just break immediately, get things a bit faster. If not type found, then we have an error. We could not find. Fail to find type. Close that up. Okay, great. But then we also want to make sure that it's okay. These cleanup can only be performed on structure types, you know, composite types of some sort. So I want to make sure not type get category. So they're always going to have the category struct. They have to have it, and it's going to always be an attribute. So 
but not that. Or type dot get category dot text. No, not equal struct. Don't need a dot. Attributes are just always text. Type again, sys x one. <sighs> so going back to how I do cleanup, I mean, what am I going to be passing it through? I'm going to be passing it through as a pointer. So if I want a header, so it's always going to be like sorry about that, void uh, cleanup. It's going to be that or just full cleanup? No, cleanup. I don't need to say faux cleanup because it's only it's going to be cleanup slash, you know, uh, the type. And it's going to be like type const star p data. Something like that. I mean, I'm not actually changing the data. I mean, I'm going to be deleting data held internally, but I'm not changing the data. You know what? That's terrible. Just like that, I think. No. Um, yeah, I'm going to hold it like that. So, <clears throat> I need to go through for, I already have the type. That means I'm going to have, like, I can just for each, go through each of these members and see, like, is it a composite or is it like a structure type or is it like an externally held memory type? And then do something based on that. So if for each member, member in, Find all uh, type member in side of these guys. Find the sub member, because it's not an attribute, it's an actual sub uh, node. Text. And the type equals member.find type, something like that. Now I have certain, whoops, don't format that. I don't like that formatting, save that. There are certain types which are, okay, that I don't care about length. Length is obviously like this is the number, this indicates the length of like how many members there are of this, but parse override, nope, that's not what I'm looking for. I have this, internal only. This is a type of member which is not managed, or sorry. This is a type, this is a member which is, is managed by some other external system or internal system. In the example of this, for full position 3D, this internal member is managed um, as part of like the position Vulcan thing. Oh my god, how am I going to explain this? It's not managed generally by a developer. It's managed by some internal subsystem which deals with this by itself. So when it comes to the point where you're actually like deleting, destroying this member through normal cleanup, this should not be considered at all. This is the only way I can do it. Like the descriptor said, this should already, by, by the point you're deleting this member, this thing should already be managed by whoever said it throughout some other system. So in this case, this is managed by specifically the position system in here somewhere. Position descriptor pool. That is managed by this. Sorry, not this. Uh, oh no, yes, it is this. It's like part of this graphic subsystem. So like that is managed internally by some other internal system, not by not for not by the general outside. So if there's an internal member, I don't care, not for this cleanup. That's man. That's because that is destroyed part of this before you even get to the point where you're destroying the actual component or resource. So it's not a concern, not a general concern. Um, so if <laughs> 
get if at continue so I can actually put that first really so now we've got to go through some things we've got to type prefix is the prefix really mean anything I don't think it does but I do have a type name type of text Yeah, the text of a type is the type, the type name. Type suffix is, so unlike in the Vulcan one, I actually have like pointers and cons and whatever as part of like of a sub attribute of type rather than like where they have it, where it's be like, you know, const star, which is like some kind of tail object. I don't really understand it. I don't really want to understand it. Whatever you do, you, I'd rather have it as an attribute, make things a bit clearer. So yeah, yeah, this equals blank, unless, you know, if you have type dot get suffix, then it becomes that type suffix equals type dot get suffix. Determine cleanup call. I mean, it's always going to be right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, to start with, when we're printing this, do we want to print this here? No, I think we want to print this at the very end. So we want to print. Um, do that. Do do do, do triple. It's a multi-line. Do do do. Dot format stuff. So we're going to have what? It's going to be void cleanup underscore the struct, the type name. Maybe open it up like that. Close that. Uh -huh. Something like that. So we got that. I need what? Cleanup text? Basically that. And then we'd have, so one, we'd have that. There's the type. Upstream. So that way if we have problems halfway through, we don't actually print, like it'll be all arguments or it'll be like just this final output. You're not gonna have like half of, uh, half of the thing printed out and then an error. Yeah, yeah, okay. If there's a star in suffix, if the type suffix, okay, first of all, no, actually, if type suffix, out. If there's that of greater than one, like if, it, if it's like a double pointer, I'm not even going to support that. I'm going to like error pr print no error. I'm not doing this. Um, double pointer indirection is not supported. If that equals one, uh, then we can um, help memory. Memory. Oh, come on, memory. There we go. <clears throat> so, if it's an external thing, we need to do cleanup string. Plus equals uh, 
first things first, we're going to say, hey, it, it's um, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's 4 deep, and it's going to be like a double thing. It's going to say, hey, this is the 0, 1. Me the type name, type... Uh, Three, like that. The format, okay, if if there's a prefix, grab that. So it's type prefix, type name, Type suffix. Okay, why don't I just put this outside here, actually? It just, it just becomes this, right? Just like that. Fantastic. Then it gets down to this, where we got clean up. String. Plus equals... Or if, because it's an external thing, I want to say if p data uh, that this that yeah format uh, the member name because we only want to do this if there's actually memory there to be <clears throat> freed. So we have to one two three four clean that up afterwards as well then we're in here <clears throat> so the question becomes if hmm Okay, one thing I do want to do though is part of this cleanup. I'm going to be freeing it. This is going to be C based. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, free. D data. Do, do, do like that. Clean that up, right? Slash n. This is a new line. New line. And new line. Thank you. So right now, if I was to, oh, and I've got like a nice little test XML, which is a whole bunch of different variations of stuff. So this is actually pretty useful. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, so I can do generate, uh, uh, clean up, dash, dash XML, dir, which is back up to test, type. Okay, first of all, if I do this, yeah, no type provided. Complex struct. Not quite work. So one, two, three, f uh, I need member name. So that's a, that's a good start. So as you can see, the pointer types are going to go into the, like, it's going to first check if the pointer's actually got something, and it's going to free it. Now what I need to do is, if it's a complex type, or what I'm going to call a complex type, if it's a struct complex type or something like that, then I also need to actually call in, you know, call it the cleanup function of that. So if, something along the lines of if, uh, uh, if is complex type, I guess, I don't even know what to call it. No, not our type. It's a type name. If that, which I'll figure out in a second, then I want to, let's say, I have two types, don't I? Um, if, <laughs> T 
type dot get length So there's two types of lengths that I have specified. I have a null terminated one, which is considered, uh, which is you know basically a char string, a char array, which is a whole bunch of characters terminated by a null character, a zero. Which you know, okay, it's a it's it's a special case, but it's, it's a pretty common special case that I want to ha have prepared. The other case is a length where I actually have this, where it says you know the number of. Mm, P input bindings is determined by input binding count, which is part of the same structure. So I have two cases. I need to, if if it's a if it's a null terminated type or just a standalone type, I don't actually have to do anything. Do I? Uh, th no, there's going to be there. Wait, there isn't going to be a null terminated version of a complex type. That's just not a case. So <clears throat> else. If it's length, if it's more than one, I need to go through a for loop. Otherwise, <clears throat> I just need to add, you know, uh, clean up string plus equals a single thing, which is just one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, four. Clean up underscore the type. data member name like that type name and member name. otherwise we have a multi-line thing we have to deal with clean up string plus equals <clears throat> the sub whatever plus plus i open up a scope yeah like that so it's the type dot get length like that we have another scope in and then we go clean up uh, the type the data the member name plus I pointer plus yeah so it's that uh, we've got member uh, type name and member name that okay now I need to figure out what a complex type is a complex type is, as defined by me, type name, XML spec roots, okay, um, it is complex, it's false, we start with false, of course, we have the term is complex. No, I don't even need that. I can just return at any time when I find it immediately. If type name dot starts with VK. If it's a Vulcan type here, I'm just going to assume it's a complex type, and you have to clean it up. Return true. Otherwise, 
right? Uh, we have an, we need to go through the for. We need the for loop through XML root in XML spec roots. The same thing where we go through types, type, attribute, name equals that. Close that up. Okay, hold on. Hmm. I may need a case where I am going into myself, right? Are there any types that could possibly go within themselves? None right now, so I'm not even going to bother. Who knows? Or... No, 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 no. If type... And type uh, dot get category and type dot get category text uh, no just equals struct if it's a struct because it's like a enum and bitnum or uh, bitmask types I don't care about those are not complex huh <sighs> if that Then I need to go through each member and see if they are complex or not. Basically, yeah. For member in like dot find all member. Suffix type and number dot count uh, dot get suffix dot count uh, stars is greater than zero. Turn true. It's a complex type right there. It's got external memory that we also need to take care of, so we need to go into that. Otherwise, we need to recurse the type if and see if that um, if it's complex type of uh, member type dot text. I'm true for that. Okay. <clears throat> Didn't work. Uh, okay, this should return nothing. If that and that and that. So it should just fail on that one, right? Invalid predicate. Types type that. Quote. Okay, that's, oh, new line. Please. Okay, it's so these, it's a VK struct, so we've got to clean up that. Great, same thing there. That is incorrect. That should be a P length type, correct? If I check the text, uh, this is supposed to use length member. So that should mean it should be going through the for loop one instead. Hmm. 
not great. If is complex. If type dot get length. No, it's not a type. It's member. If member dot get length. It's not the type. It's the member. If the member's using length. There we go. See, now we're getting somewhere. So that's a single one. It goes to the cleanup. It goes to the free. If it's multi, it goes to the for loop and cleans up each individually that is specified by length and then freeze the whole thing. It's like a large array. Um, don't care about that. Don't care about that. Um, hmm. Okay, we probably want to do something a little bit different where it's like only if We only do the types that have, yeah, there we go. A bit simpler. Actually, for the moment, put it back so I can actually see, like, make sure I'm not uh, doing the wrong thing. So, at the start, don't, yeah, no cleaning, no, no, no. Yes, that's an array of simple types. So it's just that, checks if it exists and frees the whole thing. Same thing here. Single, this is an array of, of that, that's fine. A non complex struct. So this is a structure which does not have the non complex struct, just has some plain stuff, plain old data. There's nothing to actually free in there, so that's correct. And the complex struct is the one with all the interesting stuff. So complex struct. This, yeah, I need to actually deal with this case. So that was the externally held ones. Now I just need to, like, if it's an inline structure type by itself, that's part of the struct in self. Like, it's in line. <laughs> Is it in line? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So do 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 I think Yeah. L if if this type an inline type then we're going to, have to clean it up if it's complex um, is there a length for internally held types no of course not that doesn't make any sense I don't think so no uh, so it's just a plain old cleanup Four and it's clean up uh, that p data that new line. Okay, uh, perhaps it would help if I actually formatted it with the stuff. So that was type name, number name. That's better. Okay, non-complex struct, free, free. Go through, yes, yes. What? What? Const prefix complex. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's const. I, that's the name of the actual thing. So it makes sense. Complex struct, single multi VK struct, yeah, yeah. Okay, this, okay, const prefixed. <clears throat> Do I actually? So I have const on a prefix on some of them, and I'm not getting the prefix stuff correctly, right? Oh, there, yeah, that. Fix that up. VK prefixed, post fixed, yeah, or suffix. Okay. And then I can non complex struct. Yeah, no, no, no. Clean all data. No, 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 no. Okay, and then I can just slap this in over here. So here or here.
Now I'm just trying to think like how to get rid of this empty space at the front and back. If Okay, no, I can get rid of that by just doing this, right? On the front, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know what? I don't actually care. Yeah, it doesn't actually matter. But I do want to make sure that this is not... that and then we got that you know what it's actually annoying me it's annoying me I have this extra lines I don't want there to be lines unless okay <clears throat> Can I get rid of like, is there any extra free space I got floating about on the ends of lines? Yeah. Unless, maybe if I actually just format this document. I'll get rid of some stuff. Content string. That's the thing we're going to be putting in here. But we're going to have a cleanup string here. If we, so we get this, we got the end. If then we're going to have to, we're going to add what? plus equals one, two, three, four, something like this. So it's going to be that new line that that and then we will be adding whatever this was it's cleanup string okay how's that look that looks a little bit better almost so if I just add a new line there. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. What if I do content string dot string? Something like that? I don't know if that's that's not a thing. Python <laughs> trim white. If I just strip it from the back and the front, that's that's more than enough. Trim white, strip, strip it. Okay. Oh, almost. Dang. No, 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 no. no that's actually fine. Uh, just one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. There we go. Nice, nice and clean. Great. Oh, no, no. And I need 
a new line for that as well. Okay. To space things out just a little bit. Okay, so that. Oh, I, I need to actually uh, put this into the code base. Let me grab a bit of a quick drink in BRB. It's been an hour or so. Okay, <clears throat> uh, actually putting this into practice. So to begin, okay, let me just change this up to, first of all, using the XML dir and make sure I can do it with, let's say, uh, faux material create info. How's that look? Perfect, maybe. Yes, the three external types, okay. So, um, how would this work? Oh, <laughs> I'm blinding myself. Okay. In the top level type. So we have like this. We have uh, in Photographics VK, we have one type, which is this. It doesn't actually have anything external to do. No, so that's a bad example. But these do. So I want to be here. Photographics v, uh, resource include. I'd have all these. So again, like going way back to the original thing, eventually these are all going to be included in one large header. <clears throat> so I don't really want to split things up on a per whatever basis, like having an image create info and then uh, this. Like I actually already have faux cleanup. I don't want to put faux in front of it. It doesn't have to be because the fact that it's a faux cleanup is kind of part of the type name itself already so that doesn't really help it just kind of makes things a bit harder to implement yeah but anyways all these will eventually be all together in one instead of split up and like let me just see yeah actually that that's a thing can i actually check what this is this is basically the same thing a bit less documentation, and oh, so and this is automatically generated, so I don't actually have to do this manually forever, which is great. P data, yeah, okay, different name, but, but whatever, it's good enough. So in here, there is going to be a new folder, which is tools, tool, tools, tools, source, sources, test, test. Okay, what's the libs? Tool. Okay, hold on. Let me let me see if these should be. Hmm. I kind of have a mixture of like include for multiple include source test. Uh, hold on a second. Let me see if I pluralize or should if I want to pluralize this or not. Okay. Yes, it will be tools. It will be plural. So uh, we have what do we have? Generate. Um, code. What does H? I'll just kind of add all the others to this eventually. I think. Yeah, so we're going to have is that uh, user bin and sh just regular shell. I'll call it for now. That and we're going to have some variables. We're going to have a doctor, doctor. Where, you know, it's going to be the root of the documentation directory, so it's back one. Photographics resource, libs, root, blocks. Structs, which we're going to be the ones we're going to operate on. So rather than, again, like rather than just going through the XML and just doing everything, I'm just going to specify certain uh, structures for now, I think. Yeah, I think. I think think for now so what I'm going to go through uh, image create info mesh create info microsphere create info. no that doesn't have anything material create info yes Shader create info, yes. Null term, yeah. Shader, this has types as well. So all those. 
And we're going to have what? Header file. We're going to specify it's going to be back one, include photo graphics resource cleanup dot h source file. Which is going to be back one source cleanup dot c. Oh no, before this, I need copyright stuff. Copyright. Which is going to be. I can just grab one. Like this. First of all, it's going to be the copyright year equals date. Plus percent Y, I think. Is the year okay? Good, 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 good. If if copyright year not equal twenty twenty two, then I need to do like a equals twenty twenty two to copyright year. Like that, so that I can. This also covers going into the future, so I don't actually have to keep updating it every year. This will automatically just hold up, or it should. Copyright notice then becomes the equals multi-line like that. Yes, yes. Copyright year. Da, 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 da. And we have a little warning. The space which is going to be like warning. Do not modify. This file is automatically generated with XML stack files. How long, how long was that? 88 characters. I'll just leave it like that. Yeah. So that'll be the copyright notice that we're going to paste on the top of the files, basically. Um, so header, first of all, is going to be starting off with echo that have to include something. What am I including? Are there any header files? I don't think I need to include any header files. I could just like autom uh, I can forward declare these structures. I don't need to know them quite yet. Uh, put that into the header file. For struct in do so first of all uh, doctor tools struct python struct X M L. It's already got. Ooh, yeah. Okay, just do that. That'll be fine. It'll figure it out. No, I don't even need this. Uh, cause it's so simple, right? That'll be for the source, though. So I'll keep that. this I just need I like I, I know what it is it's just going to be better file oh I also need uh, 
find that. Do that. Okay, end line. I also need the mm, this. that okay oh uh, something I actually do need is realized include oh graphics resource export I need the export uh, header so I can actually do that uh, do, 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 do. Oh, graphics res export void cleanup underscore struct is that star p data echo that Then we got to go through this to the other, this side. So we've got similar things. We've got that similar for source. So rather than this, it, this is just a plain old C file, so we don't need that. But we do need to include photographics resource cleanup. Dot H. That. And anything at the bottom? I don't think so, but we do need, it doesn't need to be part of that. Something like that. Okay, let's try this. Generate code. Go. Failure. No such file or directory. Are you sure? One, two, three. Docs. Tools. Generate cleanup. Sorry, struct cleanup. Actually, that makes kind of sense, some sense. This is specifically for a struct. Lovely. Cleanup headers. Uh, this is because of. I didn't forward it. Okay, this should be simple enough. This should just be part of from here. Not found. Okay, whatever. Struct clean up here. Again, not found. Mm hmm. The, the these actual types will need to be known by this point, won't they? Size T, don't okay. Some items I need to include standard def h. Here I need to do this where I go through and I say, hey, you know, the, this struct. I need to for declare this struct type, right? Struct that. Or either I forward declare it or I just do that actually. That'll work. Right. Oh, and I need to add this to here. Show me the failures. All of the failures. Declaration of struct will not be visible outside of this function. Yeah, okay. Unknown type name this. I mean, I mean, yeah, it is kind of true, right? We're in here, so we can do struct cleanup. Really? Mm. 
There's no new lines between them. That's right. Yeah, I do actually need to know the types so that I can actually do this. find what I'm looking for. Yes, I can get rid of that. So one thing I need that then I need like a echo new line after each one. Before each one really. Makes a bit more sense. I need to actually add the headers, so that's the dec that's where the declaration of the functions are. So I need to include X resource. Then we got to go through what image create info material mesh shader vertex descriptor. Mesh shader go ahead with that. Let's see what that we got now. Uh, implicit declaration of type of sorry of function is invalid. Why? Yes, I don't actually have it. That's because these are Vulpin types. So I need to include VK uh, VK struct. My external Vulcan libs. Does that want to go? Okay, we're doing better. If it's an inline type, that is correct. We need to make sure it's an and. Okay. This is. What's going on with this? Is this just because of that or what? What? What's. Mm -hmm. Is this because I have these? No, that's a completely different na differently named function. So that's not the problem right now. So what is? <laughs> oh, yeah, and I need to clang format. Okay, it must be to do with the fat with something to do with the uh, forward declaration of this stuff. So what I'm going to do is got all that echo it is going to be a good old fashioned struct that to struct. Like this, yeah. Mm, that's a lot better. Void star discards qualify. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Const to non const, right? That's what's going on here. No, not quite. Uh, get rid of the this out of here. Goodbye. Mm 
No, that's still there. It's a clown. Conch Char Star. Oh, it's literally called. Okay. Um, and same thing here, right? Maybe. Mm. Yeah, I don't have that type yet. These are fine. Const. Okay. So, to resolve that, what I can do is. So, zero, zero, star that, one. Same thing here and there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, can I? Thank you. We run. Okay. Let's see what we got. Make. That's a lot quieter. Not quite entirely uh, quiet. Implicitly declaring library function free with type void, void star, void. Is this just because I don't have like include, I don't know, string? Let me just quickly check. Uh, free CPP reference. Which header includes free, please? Standard lib. Okay. Okay, one last one. That is because I don't actually, I haven't done that type yet. Because that, that's from the graphics BK. But otherwise, looking good. Let me do the same thing down here. Tools, generate. Mm -hmm. Code.sh, wait. Or we just basically copy and paste this here. Except instead of graphics resources, graphics VK, that, that, that. It's not all of that. VK, clean up, great. We, do we have that type? I don't think so. But we have VK shader HPP, right? Oh, is it an HPP file? Uh oh. Get out of here. Include. Ah, it's an H. Yes. I can still stay in C land for this one. So it's just, uh, what's what's it called? That. Graphics VK cleanup. Cleanup.c. I'm going to need to have to like uh, add a new C make uh, target for this to make it easy as well. Generate code, please. What have we got? What have we got? What have we got? What have we got? We got a cleanup not H up here, which is just this type. That's fine. Clean up that. We got a source file, which is cleanup.c right here. Great. A, B, C. It's going to have, oh, um, incorrect. Okay. I don't think that type is supposed to have that. I don't think this actually has anything. It doesn't have anything that would need to be cleaned up. So that's got to be fixed. S same thing with this. This actually would have a P next, so that might have stuff it needs to be cleaned up. So that's kind of half complete, half correct. 
I need to do something about that though. To include external v uh, types. Which I think. Um. <clears throat> I might be able to use the same thing with the Vulkan XML. I may just have to, I, the, the, the suffix is a different cause it's a tail text instead of a attribute, but it's 99% of the way of correct, same thing. So, <clears throat> close, close. That needs to be different as well though. Graphics VK, graphics, it's just plain graphics export. Like that. Great. Actually, what does it even look like for this type? Shader, HPP, H. Again, folk clean up that, and it's literally just the VK descriptor set layout created in folk. And it's an external C because it's C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But actually, that does that actually mean that this is now going to be a lot quieter about the uh, other thing? Ooh, not quite. Oh, I need to regenerate. Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. It went. It just yeah. Perfect. It's a lot quieter. So now the question is about this, the Vulcan types. I need to do that somehow. So I can also add, if I have the Vulcan docs, why do I have this? Why is this here? Oh, no, 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 no. Hold on. Is this actually, hold on, whoa. Is this like part of, okay, it's, from what there was afraid, like it was actually included as part of, uh... yeah, go away. Or actually just put this up by one. Yeah, just, just ignore it from there. That's good. I would absolutely require for this to work. I need Vulcan docs to be here. Oh. Unless I can cheat just a little bit. I'm not sure if I want to cheat too hard, but Graphics VK, I could just say that this is a... Uh, it's an internal only type. That will also allow me to ignore. No, internal only here isn't going to work. Because I'm going to still need to encode and decode it uh, for YAML and binary and everything else. So that's not going to work. Okay, new strategy. <clears throat> there are very specific types where I can just say, hey, you know, remember internal only type? equals semicolon cleanup. Ignore this type for cleanup. I think I can work with that. Struct cleanup, <clears throat> go into here. If In member.get 
ignore autogen continue. I just need to ignore it for this specific type for now. I don't really want to go through the rigmarole of doing the Vulcan. I don't want to have to pull down Vulcan docs for regeneration. <sighs> no, but I'd have to re pull down Vulcan docs for regeneration for the lib YAML and the binary stuff anyways, because that's so much more complex. Anyways, I need to figure out a number. So I may as well just do it. I may as well just do it. You know what? No, 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 no. Exactly. Yeah. I'm just going to do it. Nope. No, 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 no. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. What's doing? Goodbye. Do it the hard way from the first time. Otherwise, you get to the point where you're doing hours and hours and hours of boilerplate and you hate yourself. Or at least I will. I hate myself for boilerplate. Forcing myself through so much boilerplate. I know this is technically boilerplate, but this is uh, more upfront work to help really far down the line. And it's very easily extensible or expandable or whatever. I'm justifying it to myself. And you can't stop me. So, Graphics VK, going all the way back down here to tools to generate code to this point where I'm going to have to have Vulcan Docs. I need to pull that down. I'll have a little bit of code that already does that inside of the libs. Wherever you are, there you are, libs, YAML, tools, generate. Test source, no, generate code, yes, yes. <clears throat> if not that. Clone it. Push the NG Vulcan. Docs. Okay, I also need to make sure that this is up running from this directory specifically then. Because everything is so CD. Um, Dura name of zero. I think. What's this? What did it give me? Right, pop D out of here. Yeah, yeah, Dernam was here. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is correct. So I, I go into Dub Volkander, I'll check out main. Do it quietly. Lovely. And I need to make sure I'm actually in here. So if I'm running it from outside of here, it works, right? No extra, no, no. So we're here, uh, I need to go into, from here, I need to pull in the XML dir. I need another XML dir for, let's just do this. Struck that, 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 into that. Okay, Hooks. Uh, sorry, no, it's from here. Vulcan box XML, I think. Tools, uh, da, 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 da. Vulcan docs, XML, and we have video, which I don't really care about yet. 
and vk.xml, which is one I actually care about. So this should have in here types vk whatever. And then I could just use this directly, right? I don't have to worry about, oh, no, 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 no. I still have to worry about the, the tail stuff. So, hmm. Hmm. I don't have to worry about it directly, though. Not here. I just need to worry about it in this, up here somewhere. So, trash that. Really? Really? Where did the other one go? There's two of you. Graphics resource, nope. Close to the right, okay. So, it's not actually adding more ones to it. It was supposed to. Um, Python arg parse multiple, multiple argument. Star. Is that it? Nope. Number of arguments is Sorry, not that. Struct, YAML, help, clean up. Uh, it's supposed to be multiple, yeah? Do they actually have to be together? Is this is this me? Is this a me problem? Uh, is it supposed to be like this? Yeah, okay. That's not what I was expecting, but I guess I'll take it. <clears throat> so that kind of worked maybe maybe source no it won't have uh, yeah there'll be nothing in there because it's missing so it would have gone into structure cleanup it would have gone into here it would have gone through um Going through those types, it's not going to find any of them, or maybe it will. And it's just kind of a case of a struct as well. I okay, I want to see first of all, is it actually reading Vulcan? It's okay, it is, it does find those types, so I do want to actually do a thing of a case of that. If If member type dot tail and member type tail dot count star is 
greater than zero, uh, then return true. Come on. Ooh, maybe. Okay, descriptor set layout binding did not actually go through this time. Interesting. This isn't the one I'm looking for. Goodbye. Yes! Found the one. The one I need. Thank you. Nice, 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 nice. Now, eventually, of course, this won't be a type def. It'll actually have the structure in, in the full header, blah, 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 in the future. Magical, magical future. But today... It's looking nice. Goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Okay, um, is there anywhere else that really have... This doesn't have anything to actually be removed. Neither does this. This has nothing. That's a command. That's stuff. There's nothing in here that's actually used. So basically, VK and resources are the only things to have cleanup stuff right now. Or does it bring up? Has stuff that I'll... Okay, yeah. Um, where do I put that? Just put in source. Source tools. Tools. It's just, just bottom level tools. <clears throat> it would kind of have to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got that. I want to grab uh, that, please. I don't have any Vulcan types that I have to worry about. Copy that, move that. Header file is going... Not to bring up. I need to bring that back up. We have animation import info for armature create info. That's a no on this. No on this. No on this. So it's just these two types up here. So we're going to have that. And we're going to have that. It's going to be hiding in the source simulation in here. Copy relative path. Back up like that. And out there. That and that. Okay. We don't need the Vulcan doc stuff. Copyright. Okay, foe oh, just Yeah, that, 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 there's no, uh, nothing there. We don't to care about. There's no exporting from here. <laughs> None of that. Nope, nope. It's gonna be a local one. And it is going to be local from here. Armature, create info. Yeah. Standard def and standard lib. Okay. We don't need that one. It's just that one. Okay. Uh, yeah, that'd be correct. Only one directory back now. Okay, why is that? Oh, right, 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 right. I don't need that anymore. I don't need the error print anymore. Goodbye. Nice. 
And then we have cleanup C in here. Great. Which are right now being covered by this right here. So let's just have a little quick comparison. So this is select compare, compare with selected. Goodbye. Okay, we've got that. We've got some more stuff up here. That's fine. Different name. If P file. Okay, so I got them upside down. I'm not entirely sure why. Is it just backwards because I implemented it manually? File name. Okay, files first. I lost it. Okay, file name. File name. That's it in there. A bit of extra stuff going on with a co um braces. Mm -hmm. File root armature node free free. We go through, it's a bit different. I had a bit of extra stuff there I didn't need, size T instead of that. And then, hold on, what's this? Oh, I put the those at the bottom instead of the top. Uh, yeah, do I want to do that? Do I want to kind of like reverse the order that I destroy them? Or would it even matter? It might. I don't know. It probably would. Okay, hold on. That's actually an interesting, interesting thing. I need to reverse the uh, order in which I destroy things. Just in case some things like further down the chain were allocated, depended on something else further higher. Yeah, but, you know, it's like the same thing with um, in initiation or initialization order in C++ when you try to do like constructors it has to, like the each each variable has to be done in a specific order it probably is the same thing going backwards too okay uh python reverse list first uh, reverse a list it's just that, is it? <clears throat> just dot reverse. Go backwards, please. Dot. So let's actually see if it does. On the members. Go. No. Well, that didn't work. None type object is not iterable. Uh, if I don't know what type we're doing, where well, this is a problem. You should both have stuff. Just scope these down by one, I guess. Would that work? Okay. Hmm. 
<laughs> Element tree reverse. That's not helpful. Okay, let me uh, search this a little bit more, or perhaps. Okay, what 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 happens if I just actually print this out? What happens? What is this? What is it? What is it? It's yeah. Okay, it's kind of no no no. It is a list. It is a list. What do you? And then it turns into nothing. Okay. Uh, what? Reversed? Okay, can I do list? Okay, hold on. List reversed? What's this? List of reversed of that. What? Okay. Uh, maybe, 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 maybe. Yes, okay. What are we doing? We're going the other way, right? Name and then file. Great. That's so that's why they were backwards. Animations. Yes, 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 yes. Very nice. Very nice. So that means now if I go back down to here and have a little look at that. Compare uh, select compare and compare what's selected. It's now much neater. It goes with name and then goes with file. In reverse order. Great. Perfect. Uh, okay. Yeah. Next. Um, generating code with CMake. Make things a little bit easier. So, somewhere in here, I should already have where I do it for not data. Is it data? I don't think it's data. Maybe it is. Um, somewhere. File got recurse. No. Shader make. Fancy graph. Hold on. GLSL shaders from. No, that's doing something else again. Um, hmm. Maybe it is. If I go into CMake, get out of here, get out of here, CMake. Code coverage, GLSL shaders. We're going through each of those. We find no, we're just finding the files and just putting and just throwing them through the uh, GLSL lang validator. That's not not too helpful. Hmm. Yeah, okay, hold on. Uh, I, uh, I gotta find it. I gotta find it. Hold on. Okay, okay. What about I need to create a new target, uh, top level target? I, I've done, I did this way back for shaders, I know at least, and I haven't done it since. So, what's going to happen is we're going to have a new target. If uh, target, 
somewhere in Clang format, let's say, I have a little thing which says format, format, can I, there we go. Somewhere in here, if target, if not target, if target, if, if not target, add custom target, and then I link things into that larger target. So, base thing, we're formatting code coverage, XR settings, WSI, global options, dependency graph, clang tidy, header exports, miscellaneous. Okay. Under miscellaneous, we're going to put like, if not target code gen, and if we're going to add custom target. Then we're going to have sprinkled throughout stuff. So like down here for uh, the bring up library. Add custom target. And it's going to be what? It's going to be code gen. Bring up code gen. No, no, it's going to be code gen bring up. So if you do code gen ta um, tab, you can actually find all the code gens there, there instead of uh, elsewhere. So that, and it's the command of that slash tools slash generate code dot sh. And now what I want to do is uh, target add, hold on. Add dependencies of code gen bring up to code gen like that. So make, whoa, what's going on here? Okay, so that ought to automatically generate that. And then I just have to kind of add it to the other locations. Here and here we have auxiliary targets. So let's grab that. Bring it down here. Cogen. Um, it's not really as portable right now because it's all made in, requires things at the very beginning, but whatever. That. Same thing kind of here. Like that. Tool generate code, great. This one will not yet have the CD, right? Yes. Which makes sure that it's running from the correct directory. That's what's going on here, right? Lovely. Now let's make sure that if I was to, let's say, get rid of the, these generated files, we're only going to add these guys. Okay. Uh, new branch. I don't want to put the doc stuff in yet because it's not really there, but I want to be able to put the code for generating from docs in. Um, make code gen. Yes, 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 yes. Lovely.
Okay. I think that is pretty much that for the cleanup stuff. And that's pretty much a good basis for how to proceed from here. So like that's cleanup. I still need to do compare. Then I need to retrofit the YAML as well as the Vulcan YAML. And then I need to go back into the binary stuff, which is what started this whole thing anyways. But that's a good enough start for now. Okay, so at this point, what do I need to do? Uh, the last thing I really need to do is just go ahead and change over from these to the other type. So where I see a folk cleanup, just anywhere like that. I need to change it up to hmm. like that. Not necessarily here, obviously. Uh, this will need to be included. This is going away. Goodbye. Can't quite do that. Um, but in this file, in this file, yes, 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 yes. These will be going away. This is going to be going away. I'm going to create info. This will be going away. That'll be staying like that. Okay. So that's going. Goodbye. I don't need to export anything from here anymore. Either. So it's gone. That's gone. A lot of these actually simplify some headers. That's great. <laughs> this file's gone. This file's gone. This file's gone. This file is going away as well. And this so is this one. Okay. So these, that file, that file, that file, that file, that file. Just gone. Boom. Goodbye. Oh, I don't even have the one for image. That wasn't right. Oh, but I didn't even use it, so I guess so. Share to create that create. Okay. These are gone. This is gone. This file is going to be cleaned up a little bit. But this file is going away. Goodbye. Oh, I didn't even, <laughs> I wasn't even using it. Whoops. find source file. You're correct. You're not supposed to find that source file, but why are you looking for it? Oh, there it is. That's why I couldn't find it. Okay, get rid of that. Okay. Clean up that. So we need to include First of all, formatting, great.
Okay, we got everything we need, supposedly. I guess. Yes. Make sure it actually runs, shall we? Yeah, yeah, it does. Great. No real big problems. I mean, we, yeah. Okay, well, actually, this is the one that actually matters. Is there a leak? Oh, boy. Yeah, there is somewhere in here. Somewhere in here, we're creating something and we're losing it. Great. Three objects, one object. In one object for this, no, no, okay, there's some objects here too. Great. One, three objects. I'll look at that later. But for now, these are coming along nicely. So I guess I'll kind of leave it there. I'll look at this offline. So yeah, it's about two hours and five minutes. So until next time, cheers.